So when thinking of content design for a gamified course, it all begins with the learners. As uh, uh, our panelists uh, correctly pointed out, it doesn't really work for everyone. Uh, different people have different uh, technology levels and we have to cater to that. So first understanding our target audience and the broader audience at that is very important. And then figuring out a gamifying a gamification strategy. Um, a lot of the times what happens is uh, people tend to have a, a gamification strategy in mind and then they try to fit the content into that. However, that's not the right approach. Uh, you have to first think of the best way to present the content uh, as per the learning goals, and then figure out what's the best gamification strategy for that. Um, you also have to think about how to prevent uh, monotony. Uh, for example, in a long uh, e-learning course uh, that has the same format or uh, style of content over and over, um, that can lead to a lot of monotony and uh, ultimately learner disengagement. So we can introduce gamified elements, uh, a small gamified activities at exactly the correct intervals and uh, break that monotony. Even in yeah, a- and, and Speaking to that, um, when Chris came up with this heuristic of breaking it uh, every 15 minutes, is that, is that about the time interval you're looking at or you do it more frequently or? How, how is that? Well, it depends on the content complexity again. Uh, well, if it's a, a little bit of dry content, then we try to bring in as many activities as possible. If, it's, uh, if the content is kind of intriguing or really interesting then, and, and a little bit more complex, then we try to space out the activities a little more. Um, even in fully fledged uh, gamified courses, uh, a lot of the times what happens is you have multiple stages or multiple levels of the game, but they all end up looking the same. Uh, the learner uh, gets to do the same thing over and over again, and you know that can get a little bit monotonous. So what you have to think about is continuously upping the ante. You have to up the stakes, uh, uh, introduce more challenges, a little more difficulty, so that it's always a little bit more satisfying with increasing levels of progression. Sure. Um, another thing is letting learners make decisions and, and actually be able to control things. So a lot of the times what happens, we have this, uh, these set routines and gamified learning where uh, it's, it's the same every time. Uh, and each, each learner has the same experience. But if we introduce certain aspects uh, that the learner themselves can choose and customize, for example, uh, simple things like choosing an avatar for themselves or, or maybe uh, choosing a theme for themselves, you know, and choosing environment settings, whether they, they'll be playing in, in an office setting or, or maybe a factory setting, uh, things like choices that have trade-offs. For example, uh, in maybe in a gamified activity, you give the learner certain points in the beginning, but then uh, they can choose to take more points uh, initially, but they lose out on their lives. You know, uh, things like you take a hint, but then you lose out a point. These sorts of trade-offs. Uh, there's also branching activities that you can introduce. Uh, let the learner make decisions for themselves and then move along uh, the pathways that those decisions lead to. In that way, every learner sees the consequences of their decisions, learns from them, and end up having different experiences. So when they speak to their colleagues and find out about a different experience, they're always intrigued to find out more and revisit that uh, gamified activity and maybe uh, move along a different path. Um, the next thing would be to ensure that we maintain continuity uh, of, of a story. That's something that I was speaking of a little while ago uh, when we were talking about uh, uh, using a common gamification strategy across courses. So using the same characters or roles or, or, or even story arcs across multiple modules helps learners retain the uh, emotional in investment that they might have made with a story or a character and use that uh, to pursue uh, 
well, subsequent episodes, uh, if you will, uh, sure. of the uh, of that uh, story arc. Uh, then we have to constantly keep the learner motivated. So we have to think about the right motivational elements. So gamification is all about uh, instant feedback uh, to any action that you perform. Uh, a reaction may be positive or negative. Uh, uh, positive is good with rewards. Negative is also good. It challenges uh, uh, you to perform better and try again. So sure. we can do that with badges, points, uh, leaderboards, uh, uh, things like that, loot boxes. <clears throat> yeah, you uh, talked about uh, instant feedback. I guess sometimes delayed feedback is also interesting to build up suspense and get a little bit involvement, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, however, what I was talking about is the learner having the feel that they're actually interacting with this activity or this gamified module where sure. whatever they perform has a, a sort of reaction. So right. uh, that, that sort of thing.